News and media haven't been very kind to AMD as of late, with a lot of people saying that they should either shape up or shift out. With the introduction of the 7900 GRE, it's been a little bit more forgiving because of its price to performance on that front. But by AMD's own admission, their GPUs have nosedived while Nvidia goes from strength to strength. But the big question is why? I don't know. I'm that's the question. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at the ASRock Challenger, the RX 7800 XT. And as for my rant a little bit earlier, I actually do have an answer, but we'll unpack that a little bit later. Let's begin with the design as we normally do. Okay, typical box. And typical packaging. So look at this. Immediate observation to fan design. Just your quick installation guide. Yeah. Now, if we look at the graphics card, there'll be a little bit of sheen coming off, but quite a bit of plastic around here, which I'll take it off. We've got a dual heat sink, uh, four pipes. It's got a shared heat pipe design, and then we've got our two by eight pins. And we do have the ability to turn the LED on and off over there. So it's pretty standard design. So you want to take this off. This is normally made of graphene. So we'll take that off. Graphene backplate, we'll take off the PCIe protector. Um, we're only going to take out the HDMI because that's how we're going to be testing it through, through a capture card. And let's take off this over here. Yeah, so it shouldn't have any sheen going off there. Quite a quite a solid, solid card. Um, not much more I can say. And um, there's your warranty indicator that this is still under warranty. Yeah, there we are. That's the card. We'll install this and get this running soon. The first point is if this was high school, the Challenger is the kid you never noticed until you looked at your yearbook many years later it's nothing special looks wise. Next it has dual fans, seemingly good thermals which will obviously have to be proven in tests, it has some lights and then some white strips on the back plate. Now going back to the kid analogy, this is when he got like some frosted tips in order to stand out but it didn't work. Overall on looks, if I haven't been blatant enough, this GPU better have a kick-ass personality. Next for what it's worth, let's go over the specs. Starting off with specs, it is on PCIe 4 and it takes 16 lanes. The DirectX is on 12 Ultimate. OpenGL 4.6, it does have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. The boost clock is up to 2475 megahertz and the game clock at 2169 megahertz. But not to really worry about this because we'll actually go through this when we go through the tests. Stream processors 3840, compute units 60, the memory clock is 19.5 gigs and the memory interface is 256 bits. Max resolution can go up to 8K or 7680 by 4320. With regards to the interface, it has one HDMI 2.1 and three DisplayPort 2.1s. The recommended power supply is 750 watts and it takes two by eight pin connectors. For those needing the dimensions, it's 267 millimeters by 130 millimeters by 51 millimeters. And the weight is just shy of a kilogram at 985 grams. Now for the important bit, let's talk about the performance. And let me tell you the environment in which we tested the GPU. The CPU was the 7800X3D, as I've standardized. The motherboard was the ASRock X670E Tai Chi Carrara. The RAM was the Crucial Pro DDR5, 32 gigs at 5600 megahertz. 
Yes, I still need to upgrade this. The SSD, Crucial P5 Plus, one terabyte. The PSU, still the Cooler Master, Master Watt Maker, 1200 watts. The GPU, obviously, was the ASRock Challenger RX 7800 XT. The cooler was the Corsair A115 air cooler. And the case was the Cooler Master, Master Frame 700 open air case. Starting off with Blender, now we only have the 4070 Ti Super to compare to, and that absolutely blasted the RX 7800 XT out the water. The 4070 Ti Super did get a score, as you saw from the previous review, of 7340, and the ASRock got a 2412, so really no comparison there. Moving on to 3D Mark test suites or the synthetic benchmarks, I'm not going to go through all the numbers because it's going to take too long. And the 4070 Ti Super smashed the RX 7800 XT in every single one from Time Spy, Time Spy Extreme, Fire Strike, Fire Strike Extreme, Fire Strike Ultimate, 3D Mark Speedway, and 3D Mark Port Royale. You can go through those scores at your leisure, but somewhere close, somewhere further apart. Moving on to gaming benchmarks and the thing that we're really interested in here, starting off with Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Now again, not going to go through all the results one by one, but we can see a commonality here in that the 4070 Ti Super won in 1080p, 1440 and 2160. And by good-ish margins, the only close-ish one was maybe on 1440p, but still a way to go. As you can see, the average was 91 to 62 and the 99th percentile was 67 to 48. So a hands down winner here for the 4070 Ti Super. Onto Warhammer 3 and a nice looking graph because it goes all the way down. We can see again the 4070 Ti Super winning on 1080, 1440 and at 2160. Noting all games are set to Ultra. It is the standard testing in which I do and that will apply as well to Frontiers of Pandora. Moving on to Formula 1 2021, the 4070 Ti Super smashing the RX 7800 XT yet again. Not going to go through all the results, but we have 1080p, 1440, and 2160. Now, most notably, the 2160 result for the 4070 Ti Super, or 4K result, beat the 1440p result for the RX 7800 XT and was within touching distance of the 1080p. So absolutely no competition here. Far Cry 6 where Radeon always seems to do well. We did have better results coming out of the RX 7800 XT on all scores. It won on 1080, 1440 and 2160 and it won by a fair margin but this game is optimized more for AMD than it is for Nvidia, but it's nice data to have. Moving on to Talos Principle 2, looking like Warhammer 3, where we can see the results taper perfectly down from 1080p all the way to 2160, and the 4070 Ti Super being the winner here yet again. On to the stats, and we're gonna start off with the temperatures. The 7800 XT performed very closely to the 4070 Ti Super, but the temperatures were higher in all the results, and that's on 3D Mark Time Spy, Time Spy Extreme, in Speedway, and Furmark 4K. But there and thereabouts with 64 to 66, 65 to 66, and so on and so forth. So just noting here on temperatures, but this is now comparing different manufacturers that ASRock's RX 7800 XT ran hotter than the Gigabyte 4070 Ti Super Overclock Edition. On to max wattage. Now the thing here is that the 4070 Ti Super Overclock Edition pulled more watts in every single test than the RX 7800 XT from ASRock. Now, if we go back and look at the temperatures, we did note that the 4070 Ti Super was running cooler in all tests. And this is because it's a three fan versus a two fan. So cooling definitely coming in to the results here, but good pulls nonetheless of 266, 264 and 265, depending on the test that you're looking at. Lastly, max clocks, we had the RX 7800 XT being beaten all around the clock except on Furmark where it pulled 1953 versus the 4070 Ti Super Overclock on 1890. But we do see the scores of 2683 on Time Spy, 2757 on Time Spy Extreme, and on Speedway, 2500 on the dot. So going forward, I'm not gonna focus so much on the data that I've represented now because what I wanna do is present a summary at the end of what this data means. Don't get me wrong, we will look at the test data, but we'll only look at it 
basically in short and if there's anything to note we will note it but i want to focus more on the summary so that we can get more comparative data on gpu cpus and so on so i've got three things that i want to look at the first one is the scores so we will look at the blender score so there it is summarized where we can see the 4070 ti super one then all the cumulative scores for 3d mark the frames for 1080p in games 1440p in games and 2160 so we can see the green mark there for the 4070 Ti won everywhere from Blender all the way through to 2160p on gaming. Now what I did was I put that all into a score. Now the winning GPU or CPU, depending on what test we're gonna do, is always going to score 10 and everything else that comes underneath that is gonna be a derivative of 10. This means that if the score from the 4070 Ti Super is 10, the ASRock RX 7800 XT will be 3.3 because that's the score derived from the 2412 which I got in Blender versus the 4070 Ti Super's 7340. Then onto 3D Mark we see a score of 10 to 8.1 so the 4070 Ti Super winning again. In gaming performance I did that as an overall but an overall score of 10 for the 4070 Ti Super versus the 6.6 .6 of the RX 7800 XT being heavily pulled down by its Blender score. So again, I might include more benchmarks like Blender in order to average out because this could be a very bad representation of AMD because it's only featuring one rendering program. So I will include two, three or four so that we do have a more comparable average but this is something that I wanna do. So I do want you to let me know in the comments if you do like this, because the last one is where we're actually gonna do the price to performance. Now, again, this is some mathematics that I've drawn up. It could be right, it could be wrong, but it kind of gives us a understanding. So if we look at the price, the 4070 Ti Super is 19,799 versus the ASRock of 12,999. Now, obviously the rendering price to performance is going to be a 10. Again, it is a direct derivative for the 4070 Ti Super versus 5. So because the price is so much better than the 4070 Ti Super, we can see the RX 7800 XT pushing that overall 3.3 score up to 5. In synthetic price to performance, however, the RX 7800 XT actually scored a 10 to the 4070 Ti's 8.1. And this is again because of the price difference. In gaming price to performance, 7.9 to 10. And then in overall, we had 8.7 for the 4070 Ti Super to the RX 7800 XT's 8.3. So depending on which derivative you're looking at or which score you're looking at, the ASRock RX 7800 XT does perform better price performance in synthetics as well as games. So if you're buying this for games, you might wanna look at the RX 7800 XT if you are on a budget versus the 4070 Ti Super. But again, when we have more data, we can draw way more comparisons. But I think this is a really cool way to start looking at the data because at the end of the day, when you are potting with your money in order to buy a product, you wanna make sure that you're buying the best bang for buck. But if price is no object, obviously you can go for what you like better. There are other things to consider like ecosystems, for example, the different Nvidia and AMD programs that you might make use of. So obviously that does come into contention. I'm just talking about raw performance as I see it here. On to the conclusion, and it's obvious that the performance is good. We will know more comparatively as time goes by, but let's compare it with itself. We always have to be cognizant of the market because on face value and performance, it should be a theoretical purchase no-brainer. What I mean by this and looking at the market is we've got three fan gigabyte and ASUS versions for around about 500 Rand more. And then we have an XFX, which is considered to be tier two, but a three fan version at 11299. Now bear in mind that I haven't tested any of these cards, but we have to assume that they're gonna be in the ballpark of performance of the 7800 or slightly better because of the theoretical cooling. Therefore, for me, this card is a recommend purchase if it was at 11499, not the 12 trip nine that it's currently at. And the reason for this is I do believe that it's got a premium over call it tier two cards, but it shouldn't be that close to ASUS and Gigabyte 3 fan cards. But please do your own checks as these prices can vary depending on where you live. Otherwise, a great card just needs a fix in price. Hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. As always, cheers, goodbye.